Hello, the internet saffron here, going back into a summer with the Shiva in you. In the last episode, we flash back to arena number 12 or whatever, and we've been chased by this trapper. And now she wants to come to an accord. Basically, she wants to use Sid so that she can take down other dogs. Um, and, and we have our three options here. We have, I'll do it. I'll do it, but you're going to regret it. Or I hope you should do not mind, but I'll do it. So either way, you're helping. <laughs> you're helping this trapper. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to be cocky because I think that's what Sid would do. So it's like, I'll do it, but you're going to regret it. I can't take her arrogance lying down. Even if provoking her might cause her to hold a grudge, which puts me in an even more dangerous situation. I'll do it, but you're going to regret this. I say, I don't think she's the one to hold grudges. I think she's like, well, she's got enough confidence that she's like, I don't care what he says, she says. She nods in response. Alternating least Shebas. Now it's going to be hard to work together if you're standing that far away, but I understand why you're keeping your distance. So see here. She reaches into her shirt and pulls out her pendant. Uh-huh. What? Slowly and deliberately, she puts it into her shirt, but makes the exact location of it clear. Don't worry, I don't need to see yours. Not right now, anyway. So you want to come here and discuss a way to make these floors ours? Shakily, I nod. We head down the fire escape to the trapper's base, the office floors. Her name is actually Zhu La. I still think of her as a trapper, though. I'm glum, having just agreed to a deal that completely undermines my own ability and independence. Wonder if this is what IU felt being in a partnership where the other dog has the upper paw. Think so highly of yourself, Sid. Sounds like IU just wanted to have an ally. But anyway, the trapper lays out her plan. I pitch some suggestions, some of which she agrees with and includes in the final strategy. She also tells me to get a grip because if I perform poorly, she'll eliminate me on the spot. I don't doubt she'll make good on that threat. Sometime later. We split up to our respective floors to gather supplies for the offensive plan. We need rope, wire, and hooks. I also rip up some clothes into wide strips, which I wrap around my legs. With all that set, we hit up, my, me by the elevator and the trapper by fire escape. Once I hide, you trip the wires, got it? I nod and I wait until she vanishes into one of the hotel rooms. Here it goes, ah, oh, that's why she wrapped her paws. I prod the trip wires, though this time my legs are wrapped in layers of cloth to insulate against the electric shocks. Time to put my acting to the test. I quickly unwrap the claws and hide them in a potted plant nearby. Then, continuing to yap, I fall to the ground, pretending to be in pain. Yes, she fell for it. That was fast. I wonder why she didn't appear last time. Wait a minute. <laughs> Now that I think about it, the Trapper wasn't worried at all about asking me to collaborate on enemy territory. Maybe the Trapper knew she wasn't here. The dog approaches slowly at first, but then, convinced that I am hurt, pounces. I leap up to the side. She misses, and I dash down the corridor. Down the corridor and to the left. I fling myself into the room where the Trapper is hiding, conveniently forgetting to close the door. Knowing where the trap triggers are, I jump over them, but the dog rushing in after me isn't as fortunate. At a touch of the trigger, she's strung up, upside down. Trying to escape, the dog starts swinging back and forth desperately. The trapper and I didn't really plan beyond capturing the dog, but I guess I'll eliminate her while she's tied up. But as I go up to pat her, suddenly the wires hum and my fur rises on end. Wait, what? This is the same type of wire as the traps at the elevator area. I freeze, my paw mere millimeters away from the wire. The trapper set this up not only to tie up the dog, but also to electrocute. Once. Twice? Just when I think it's over, the wires buzz again and again. The dog howls un until it cannot. It, fail it falls limp. I can't look away. The torture is so unnecessary. I can only describe it as gruesome. The, only bre the one brief shock to my paw the first time had me numb, so I can't imagine what it feels like to be shocked for this long. The dog is still conscious, but her wide, lolling eyes make it clear that she's in pain. I've never seen a dog as sadistic as the trapper in the arenas. I guess the one thing is that we can't technically die here. Well, bar that unfortunate incident back in my old arena. We can't afford the time to torture fellow dogs. Usually we just get the elimination over with. I jump as a trapper emerges from inside a closet. 
So she was here the whole time. Why didn't she show herself until now? Because she was waiting for Sid to get zapped, too. Hi there. The dog squirms, but doesn't seem to be able to answer. Not a very talkative one, are we? Is this how she treats all the dogs she traps? Talks to them until they'd rather be eliminated than listen to her any longer? She's just been electrocuted. Of course she's not talkative. Fish sticks. I, should have said, I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> You're right. Silly me. Just trying to ease the tension. Her tone. She's totally enjoying it. God, this is so twisted. I can't stand it anymore. Why are you being so sadistic? Let's just eliminate her and get it over with. Oh, Sid said. Such a noble dog, aren't you? Sadistic, you call me. What about yourself? What do you mean? You know what I mean. You're here in this bracket. You've done your fair share. She smirks lazily, her lips curling to show her canines. I've never been like this. I saw you eliminate another dog the other day. You were taking your time, even though it was already tied up just like this. Oh, that poor dog. I was just trying to find out his name. She suddenly stops smirking. You know I was kidding what I said the first time about prod dogs. Oh, that? The sudden change of topic catches me off guard. Right, she said something about prod dogs the first time we met. I forgot all about that. I was so focused on escaping. C kidding or not, it doesn't make a difference to me. Well, I was kidding when I asked if you were one because I know you were raised as one. I scoff. What do you know anyway? Just because I was in an arena or two in the plains doesn't make me a prod dog. I suppose not, but maybe you wouldn't have made it so far if not for that. If you worked your way up in that environment, there's something about it you can never shake off, even if you want to. It doesn't make a difference to me, I said. There's no need to discuss this. Let's just eliminate the dog. All right, all right. If you wish, you can do the honors. We will talk again. We will talk about how you killed that dog in real life by killing him in the arena. I've been intrigued for a long time. <gasps> she knows about that, too. God, ignore her. Just focus on what's, on, what's at paw. I search the dog for her pendant. She doesn't resist whatsoever. When the trap recorded me, all I could do is run. She doesn't even have the op that option. So what would be the point of resisting? I find the pendant and crush it with a clean swipe. Shattered. The wires, once taut with the dog's weight, now hang loose. I turn to the trapper. Look, I'm not sure why you want to learn about my past arena, and I don't care. But to be frank, I might not be able to answer your questions. I didn't do anything on purpose. Could have been a hardware malfunction with the ARI equipment. The tracker gives me a gleeful smile. Even after all these years, you're still in denial. But next time, we can find out. Okay. With that, our job here is done. With me in tow, the trapper wastes no time in gathering supplies and building traps. By the end of the day, the floor is effectively a trapper certified floor as well. Okay, day six. The following days, we eliminate several more dogs. The strains have things, have things consistently going well again. I can't help but draw parallels between my current partnership to the one between me and IU. Except now I am the disposable one. Please endure and survive, Sid. If I can only endure and survive one more day. I repeat that phrase to myself. I feel like a shell of my former self. There is one ruler of reality, and I'm not it after all. That is not to say I've completely given up hope. I've just had to update my expectations realistically. In the meantime, I scout things out for the trapper. It's imperative that I tell her all my findings with complete honesty, because any missing detail could jeopardize our position. Or she would think so. But there are places I've found that I hope she has no idea about. I make a mental note of these deserted rooms and move on. They could be control rooms, storage rooms, and the like. I hope I find something that can help me turn the tables. Not that my existence is really that miserable. I will still come out with a decent ranking, and considering my current status, that's enough to end up in the top 10% or so. That'll give me enough standing to live with reasonable freedom. I will be completely free, like my goal was to become, but to answer 10% of the dogs on an island isn't the worst that could happen, right? So I accept that it's fine to go along with the trapper. Accepting the fact is a blow to my ego. I feel, it feels like everything I've expected of myself for my whole life has been proved a lie. My values, my fight for freedom. I wanted to play the air eyes game to win because winning it would bring me more power. But now I realize my reality is bounded by the rules of the game. I cannot change my reality any further. Anyway. 
Stop spacing out and get back to gathering supplies, Sid. Sometime later. It's so, it's so weird. So is any of this real? I'm resting in my original home base, the shopping floors. Though to describe it as resting might be too optimistic. I'm shivering, my heart pounding so loudly in my ears it's the only thing I can hear. Get a grip, get a grip. But stop the shaking, I cannot. It's getting harder and harder to calm down these days. Maybe that's why the trapper decided to teach me a lesson. Some time ago. <laughs> we eliminated the dog we were pursuing up on the outdoor observatory. Unlike the regular observatory with floor to glass ceilings, this was the real deal. There's nothing separating Sheba from sky or ground. Up there, the trapper caught me. It was over the ledge that she had dangled me. I arched my neck up to see only the top of her face peering at me. The wind in my fur, the view from up high, the city which I had fought tooth and claw to come to. The city where I thought my dreams would come true. Dreams I thought I could make come true as, I lo as long as I worked hard enough, as long as I outsmarted other dogs. As long as I betrayed and used enough dogs. She could see me unraveling. She wanted to give me an ultimatum. She gracefully told me that it wasn't my performance that had been suffering, as I hadn't made any mistakes that cost us eliminations. Sure, there had been a dog or two that got away, but they wouldn't have been caught in the first place, mistakes or not. But she could see that my mental state was, at, was a risk. The upside down view of the city, combined with the blood rushing to my head, had made me, it made me almost lose it. But I promised her, I promised her I would get my emotions in order and not pose a potential risk. With that, she let me go and told me to take a day off. Okay, so here I am. Here I am lying immobile and shaking uncontrollably. She needs me. She didn't eliminate me right there and then. She must see a future use for me. But I can't see a way of out, out for my future self. The view of the city upside down, my limbs tied up and at the mercy of the trapper, returns to me. Dog damn it, Sid. <laughs> I yell and yell. I wonder if the trapper can hear. I mutter more quietly this time. Ugh, who cares what she thinks if she hears me or if she hears me losing it? I'm just coping. The view of the upside down city, coping. Screw coping. I'll play the game like I always did. I'm not doing well right now, but there's one way to escape the Allocated Reality Institute's game. The only way to escape the game is to play the game. This game that everyone has to play, the arenas. And since I can't play the arenas to win the arenas, I'll play the arenas to escape the arenas. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Maniacal laugh <laughs> sometime later. There was something I saw while off the ledge. Something I saw that terrified me. If I had been dropped by the trapper, surely my pendant would have been crushed on impact. I wouldn't die, but I would suffer immense pain in the moment before I wake up in the real world as an eliminated dog. So I'm back here on the ledge. What I saw this time was beautiful. It was beautiful and terrifying. I want to see it again. And so I leap. Okay. I don't understand where these trophies are coming in. <laughs> the familiar sensation of the consciousness fading, yet still being aware and sentient. Like emerging from sleep, waking into a world that is real, yet completely parallel to real life. The emulated reality in which arenas are set. Okay, so now we're back in the present. So did she, she committed... Like, she eliminated herself, committed suicide, I guess. The world comes into focus again, and I can feel it. The exhilaration when an arena has begun. This one is set in a modern... Yeah, uh, yep, yep. We're back in the mall. Usually busting with dogs, blah, blah, blah. Chris Card escalators, blah, blah, blah. I remember this play. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you for reminding us as well. We need to repeat that whole thing. <sighs> I remember this place well, almost too well. This arena was one of the lowest points in my life. It's surprising how fast a dog can fall. I had thought I was invincible. So what happened back then in Island Year 211? Uh, what, what did happen? It's probably the same answer either way, because she went upstairs to hunt the trapper, went upstairs and was caught. So she could have gone upstairs to hunt the trapper and was still caught. All right, we're going to say she did that. Trapper let me go that first encounter, even though she had me at her mercy. 
This re-challenge, if I enter her territory upstairs, she won't let me off the hook that easily. I know of the copied arena's existence, but I don't think she does. So the copied arena will be my backup strategy. Sinking around and trying to reorient myself with the once familiar shopping floor, I find the ominous fire escape. Regardless what she plans to do, I should go find her. I'll be more prepared. I just want to, don't want to be passive and be caught off guard. I wonder if she'll even bother rigging up her floors this time around. Nevertheless, I've learned from my experiences. This time, I won't let her make me her slave. The climb is so much longer than I remembered. These re-challenges are making me remember how alone I felt back then in the years of participating in the arenas. In the real world, I can chat and eat all I want with Max and Kui Lee. I can create and maintain friendships, enjoy the sunny days. In the arenas back then, everything was so solitary. Here, I'm back to being all alone. The climb seems to stretch on forever with just, with just me and my thoughts. I have to tough it out. Think of it as a mission to beat in order to proceed to the main story to find... Yes, let's proceed to the main story of finding Chun Wen. <laughs> I'm all for that. I reach the office floors. It's like the dog is reading my mind. The scene of me being cornered by the trapper flashes through my mind again. With no other survivors to save me from the basement. Never mind, I'm thinking about a game from Canine Da, aren't I? Funny that that nickname I gave Zhu La still holds true. Even as one dog acting independently, she inspires that fear. I crouch down, edging into the office while maintaining cover by the desks. Hmm, nothing, to see nothing seems to have been touched in this room. There aren't even tripwires, which I remembered from the last time. <gasps> Gasp! I was half kidding when I thought she wouldn't bother rigging up this floor. So she's doing things completely different this time. I'll keep looking around. This room cleared, I peek cautiously into the central corridor hub area. No sign of the trapper. Just in case, I search the other offices one by one. Every corner I round, every desk I peek over from takes courage. Still nothing. Where could she be? She could have set a trap in the higher floors. Is there somewhere she'd expect me to go? I shudder. The observatory deck, maybe. I'd best get some supplies before checking it out. Don't want to be dangled over the ledge again. With that, I head back down to the fire escape. I'll need string. I can get that from shoelaces. I remember there being an upscale shoe store for fancy occasion. They don't wear shoes. None of the dogs have worn shoes. Okay. Rope. I can rip clothes from the clothing store to make it. I can find belts as well. Back at the escalator area, I take stock of the available stores. Hmm, Zara is a good clothing store. I think the shoe stores are on the floor below. I need to hurry. The trapper has had a lot of time to make preparations, too. I head into Zara and find some belts. With my paws and teeth, I tear fabric into long strips, twisting and tying them into a makeshift rope. I've learned a lot from working with the trapper. She'll find it ironic when I beat her with her own tricks. Next stop is the shoe store. With every step, I feel purposeful. Time to take down the trapper. In the past, I had avoided using the escalators in fear of being seen. But in this situation, there isn't anyone but the trapper I need to worry about. If I remember correctly, it should be down this way. I follow some signs to the opposite end of the floor. I had once gathered supplies from this very store for a mission with the trapper, and the shoelaces would be just what I need. I enter the store, rows and rows of shoes displayed on the wall. Dogs only wear shoes on special occasions, so while it makes sense to have a shoe store in a fancy shopping center like this, they are rare on the island. Oh, okay, well that explains that then. <gasps> I'm upside down! <laughs> I crane my neck to see that I'm dangled by my soundly tied limbs to the ceiling. I didn't realize it then, but now I remember when exactly I grazed the tripwire. I'm glad my hunch paid off. God, I remember this voice. The trapper's tone reserved for prey. Oh, hi, Zula. It's just so casual. Hi, how are you? My heart is pounding and I'm starting to get dizzy. I struggle and pull with my legs, which only result in me swinging back and forth. The trapper calmly watches me, not saying a word. All right, I give up. It's hopeless. Even after all these years, you still have the upper paw. I was na naive to think I could surpass you. Just eliminate me already. The trapper stands still as if contemplating it. It's humiliating. Humiliating. Sh humiliating. 
<laughs> Come on, I couldn't say that. It's humiliating. She read me like an open book. She read me like an open book. I can't read that. God, just do it. I've been puzzling about this ever since that time. How did you do it? It's like deja vu. But we will talk again. We will talk about how you killed that dog in real life by killing him in the arena. I've been intrigued for a long time. First, she was curious about the Fanchu incident in the Arena 9. Of course, she's also curious about how I eliminated her in Arena 12. If I were her, with such lethal skills, I would be curious too. I'd be curious about how Sid, a weak minion, turned the tables on her. I kept it a secret for many years, of course. I didn't want to let it be become... I didn't want it want I didn't want to let it become public knowledge. <laughs> if other dogs trying started trying what I did, it could bring down the entire structure of the arenas. At the time, I had thought about revealing my cheat. The island could break free of the ARI's grip. In my dream, Shiba Inus would no longer be separated as good and bad dogs. Good and bad dogs. We'd never have to prove that we are better than another Shiba Inu ever again. Shiba Inu Island would be a place where Shivas could just grow up as themselves. The thought of a future like that was beautiful. It was like sunlight, but it was only fleeting warmth I felt. I chose not to act on that thought. I wanted to guarantee my own freedom and power, and if freeing the entire island would be determined detrimental to my goal in any way, it was a no-go. I haven't told a single soul about what happened in Arena 12, and I'm not going to tell her the truth now. Really? <laughs> You underestimated me. That's what happened. That's the only reason I beat you. I considered the possibility that I underestimated you. The trapper speaks slowly, as if really dwelling on her words. I've never seen her being so deliberate before. Everything just seemed to work in her mind instantly with a claw click. I thought very carefully about your skills before asking you to come on board with me. I don't make mistakes. I really thought I had the upper paw, but never has a dog proved me so wrong. Have you ever had minions in the arena, Sid? Yes, I have. So I knew what you were doing. I knew both the risks and benefits of having that kind of power over another dog. Honestly, when you spared me, I finally understood what my minions must have felt. The visceral understanding that you could eliminate me whenever you wished, however you wished. For self-preservation, any dog would obey. You are correct that you had the upper paw over me on all fronts. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you didn't. I got lucky, that's all. I'm just trying to understand. So you've been on the other side of the manipulative so you've been on the other side of a manipulative strategic partnership? The phrase manipulative strategic partnership rolls off her tongue smoothly. It is a term that she has a clear definition for, a term that she frequently uses. Maybe you gained some perspective by being the minion, whereas I had never been in that position before, which allowed you to blindside me. That's a real stretch. I'm sorry, but I really don't have the answers you're looking for. The trapper shakes her head. That is unfortunate. But this is still what you wanted, right? You have me at your mercy. How I eliminate you in the past isn't important. You could eliminate me now and overwrite it all. You seem very eager. I just want to get this over with. I've half a mind to just leave you here and see if you escape. Your call, not mine. The trapper shrugs. Then without a word, she turns and walks off. Now I have another fighting chance. I twist, swinging back and forth. I try to lift my muzzle to the ropes, but my strength fails me. I can't reach far enough to attempt biting through the rope. I let my head fall back, letting the ropes take all my weight. It's almost relaxing, the, rope, the ropes taut and gently rocking me. It's so quiet. Why does she refuse to get this over with? I don't understand her fixation on those questions. I've already told her I know nothing. Though I guess eliminating me or even winning the feather isn't as important to her as finding the answers. The way she talked to me, it was different. She was so honest, if honest is the right word here. She seemed to generally treat me as an equal. That's kind of flattering, I guess. I should give up. I really can't beat her with normal means. I can't escape this trap just by myself. I guess it's kind of time to go to the copied arena. At least I tried here. Knowing her, she'll be monitoring this area for a while. If she witnesses me going to the copied arena, I wonder if she can follow me. So there's like a back door? 15 minutes later, according to Sid's sense of time, probably, probably inaccurate. <laughs> All right, and we will pick it up next time and see what happens after the 15 minutes. <laughs>
So thank you so much for watching. If you like it, ring that bell, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all later.